What are intermolecular forces? In this video, we're going to be looking at and studying intermolecular forces and the different types of intermolecular forces. And before we get started into discussing what the different types of intermolecular forces are, we need to understand what are or what is an intermolecular force. And so uh, the most basic definition of an intermolecular force is the attraction between two different molecules. And so there are actually two different types of, of interactions that can take place. There's the intermolecular force and then there is the intramolecular force. The intramolecular force is actually the bonds that hold the atoms together. So in this particular example, you see the covalent bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, and that's what makes the intramolecular force. Now the intermolecular force is the, the bond that, that is not a permanent bond, but it's the interactions that have that happen in between the two different molecules of HCl. And so intermolecular forces are actually weaker interactions. They're not permanent, uh, but they're what hold. They're the glue that hold the molecules together. And there are different types of intermolecular forces of interaction. So uh, these are also called, and they're grouped into what is called van der Waals forces. And these are the different types of van der Waals forces that are and can be present. They're not always going to be present in everything. And that's what we're going to focus on here in this video is looking at the different types of interactions and uh, trying to understand what and how they work. So the first thing is the ion dipole interaction. And the ion di dipole interaction occurs whenever you have an ion present and a molecule that has a dipole moment. And so the strength of these forces are what makes it possible for ionic substance to dissolve into polar solvents. Now, we have to go back and we have to understand a little bit about the Lewis structures of the molecules. And we, from those Lewis structures, we can determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. And that's where this really ties in because when you look at the word dipole, dipole is referring to a molecule that is polar that has a permanent dipole moment. And so uh, looking at water, water has a Lewis structure. And if you don't remember how to draw Lewis structures, you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to review that part from chemistry one. So, uh, but for this video, we're focused on trying to understand where the dipole comes from and how that interaction uh, is important and within the different intermolecular forces. So the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen. And there's nothing on the other side that, that, that would cancel out this dipole. So you're going to have a dipole that pulls from the hydrogen towards the oxygen, cause a difference of the electronegativity. And you're also going to see it on the other side. Again, there's nothing to cancel it out. So the, the net dipole is pulling towards the oxygen. So we call this molecule polar. So anytime you have a polar molecule, you're going to have a dipole moment. And so when we put NaCl into water, and so we have a beaker here with water in it, and what happens here is that when you put your table salt into the water, the, the sodium ions dissolve and dissociate, and then also the chloride ions dissociate. Now, the, when you look at the water molecule, the oxygen has a partial negative charge and the hydrogen has a partial positive charge because of the oxygen pulling the electrons towards it. And so when you put this into water, what happens are the interactions that take place. Uh, you have the sodium here, I'm circling it in this picture. The sodium aligns itself with the oxygen because the oxygen has a negative charge. And you can see what happens is the the oxygen from multiple waters surrounds the the ion and the same thing holds true with the chloride ion and the hydrogen ions so the the interactions that you see here you have your dipole interaction and you have your ion so the reason why we call it an ion dipole interaction is because you have the ion 
interacting with the dipole. And again, these interactions are not permanent. If you leave the, a beaker of water with salt dissolved into it, and you let it sit there for a couple weeks, what will happen is the water will evaporate and you'll be left over with the salt. So these are not permanent uh, bonds that take place. These are just interactions that happen and they come and go. So, so the first type of interaction are the ion doctoral interactions. Now, another thing to remember here and make note of is that the ion dipole interaction is the strongest intermolecular force. And it requires a lot of energy to break apart those ion dipole interactions. And so now as we start to look at the other ones, uh, the other interactions are also, they can be strong, but they also can be weak just depending on uh, what is actually in the solution and the type of interaction that's taking place. So the second type of interaction are the dipole-dipole interactions. Again, dipole just refers to the fact that you have a polar molecule. These are permanent dipoles. And so you have to draw the Lewis structure first, and then from the Lewis structure, you have to figure out whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar. If the molecule is polar, it's going to have dipole dipole interactions automatically. And what we're looking at here in this particular uh, picture are water molecules. Just like we saw on the previous page, the water molecule has a dipole. All right, and this dipole forms these partial charges. So you have a partial negative and a partial positive and you have another partial positive charge here. So what happens uh, is whenever the hydrogen from a neighboring molecule of water gets close to, the, to another oxygen, you have these interactions that take place. And this interaction here is the dipole-dipole interaction. Now, that's, the, that's not the same as the ion dipole interaction, but it, it sort of works in the same manner. And the, the difference here is that this dipole dipole interaction is actually fairly weak in comparison to the ion dipole interaction. If you go and look in the guide to intermolecular forces, there's a chart on, on one of the pages that describes to you what the actual strengths of the interactions are. And you can compare and contrast between the ion dipole, the di dipole dipole, lung dispersion, etc. And so uh, these interactions here, we're just focused on the fact that we're dealing with dipole dipole. Uh, if we look at the HCl molecule that we saw in the very beginning slide of this, uh, the HCl molecule is a polar molecule and the hydrogen is less electronegative than the chlorine, so you form a partial positive on the hydrogen you form a partial negative on the chlorine. And so what ends up happening here is that you end up forming that dipole-dipole interaction between the hydrogen and the chlorine atom from the neighbor molecule. So this is your dipole-dipole interaction here. Again, going back to the difference between inter versus intra, we're only focused on the intermolecular force, and that's the interaction that's between two differing molecules. All right, so you got to be really careful in, in, in understanding the type of interaction that you're dealing with. We're only focused on intermolecular forces here. Now, another thing here, and I'm going to erase this here, uh, are understanding that these forces only happen when the molecules are close together. So the molecules have to be close enough to each other for them to pull together to, re to interact with each other. Think of two molecules, so let's say you're driving down the road, it's raining and you get these water droplets on the window. You have these two water droplets that are separated, but the wind from driving pushes them close together. What happens to those two water molecules? They come together and make one water molecule. Why is that the case? It's because of the intermolecular forces that are taking place there. It's those interactions that's happening, the, those dipole-dipole interactions that's pulling those molecules together and causing them to make one big water droplet. And so you know that water sticks together pretty well. 
and that's because of that interaction. Now, uh, as we start to look at the polarity of the molecule, we also have to take into consideration the boiling point of that substance. And so in this particular table, we have uh, five different molecules, propane, ether, methyl chloride. And what we're going to observe here is the fact that the, the dipole moments of these change. Now, propane is a fairly nonpolar substance. It has a very, very small dipole just for the simple fact that the carbon and hydrogen has a small difference in electronegativity. Its boiling point is 231 Kelvin. We move up to ether. What's the difference here? Instead of having a CH2 in the middle, now you have an oxygen. So what happens here is that this oxygen creates a difference in electronegativity. And if you were to draw the Lewis structure, and we're only going to focus on the central part here, and so if we look at the carbon and the oxygen, the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon. This is just like the water molecule. The difference in electronegativity is pulling towards the oxygen, which creates a dipole moment, causing this molecule to be more polar than propane. As a result, the boiling point of this substance is higher. We go to methyl chloride. We see that the chlorine is more electronegative, so we're going to have a net pull towards the chlorine. It's, this is a strong dipole moment. You can see that the, the values are increasing and the boiling point does go up. Not by much, but it does go up. Acetaldehyde and acetonitrile, same concept. There's not really any sym symmetry here. The molecules are, have a lot of different things happening. And the main thing is understanding that these oxygen and nitrogen are more electronegative. So the net dipoles pulling towards those, creating a larger dipole moment. And as a result, the boiling point is increasing consistently. So you have to look at the Lewis structure. You have to understand you know, the complexity of the, of the molecules in, in trying to determine, you know, if I have two polar molecules, which one's more polar? And that really is determined by the atoms and how they're arranged in that molecule. So the more polar the molecule, the higher it's boiling point because it has a stronger dipole-dipole interaction. It all ties back into those intermolecular forces that we're discussing here. So stronger dipole, higher boiling point. Now we got we get into London dispersion forces here, and I'm going to stop the video at this point, and we're going to discuss the next two, which is London dispersion forces and hydrogen bonds in the next video. So make sure you go on and watch the second video in relation to intermolecular forces.